I worked for United Artists uh, in the late 70s and the early 80s, and I was very aware of the fact that uh, they were still, at that late date, distributing uh, Pink Panther to Patty Freeling cartoons to movie theaters. Dogfather cartoons were still getting bookings back then. I was involved a little bit with that. Uh, in fact, the curiosity got to me because for some reason, all the theaters I went to in Manhattan and, and Queens and where I lived in New York didn't play cartoons. Uh, one day I noticed they were playing a uh, one of these Dogfather cartoons at a theater right across the street from where United Artists was. United Artists was in Times Square, and it was at uh, the World 49th Street. Now, here's something for you to look up in, in you know, in Google this. But the World 49th Street back in uh, 19, you know, 79, 80 was a porno theater. And I didn't go to porno theaters, but I was just overcome with the curiosity of, I had the knowledge that a dog father cartoon was booked to play for the week you know, coming up at the World Theater, which was right across the street from United Artists. But I thought, you know, I want to see the interior of this theater. I guess I, uh, I, I, I want to see how they're running this cartoon, if they are. I mean, I figured it was my duty. It's part of my job. <laughs> so I um, bought a ticket. I went in. had a very good time watching the movie. And when it was all over... The Dogfather cartoon came on. I now understood the term a chaser. Uh, the film was a chaser, meaning it was used to uh, get people out of the theater. And it worked. It really did. It did its job. And uh, I stayed for the entirety of the cartoon. They never turned the lights on in theaters like this back in those days. It would go right from the cartoon into a trailer for another porno film. Uh, I had to see the, how they did this, and I did. And I don't regret it one bit.